We're going to have a really quick lesson about cloud types and cloud names and how scientists categorize clouds using just a few terms um, and they kind of mix and match them. So I've drawn a diagram here of the troposphere from sea level to the tropopause at the top about 10 to 12 kilometers up and I've broken it into three zones that scientists use to help classify clouds as to where they occur in the troposphere. Uh, some occur down closer to the surface, others appear uh, most often in this middle zone and others are, are most often found in the uh, very upper reaches of the troposphere. So I've drawn also a profile of a mountain so you can see how uh, tall uh, some, um, these are very tall mountains, um, are in the troposphere. Um, I've also drawn a jet over here way out of scale, um, but I wanted you to see that contrails that come out of the back end of jet engines, um, which are the uh, the water vapor that has gone through the engine and then condensed on dust particles just outside of the engine and frozen um, are made of, uh, of ice crystals just like clouds that are found up here in these upper reaches of the troposphere. So some of the terms that we need to know um, are from Latin and our first term is cumulus which is a type of cloud that um, we recognize as being very mound-like. These are those puffy white clouds that we uh, think of as, uh, you know, like looking like uh, uh, cotton balls or, or uh, you know, sometimes you might think that they look like your dog or something like that, right? Cumulus means mound. So those are the ones that are, uh, you know, that we watch floating by on a nice day. Uh, the second term is stratus. And stratus means spread out. So if you think of a blanket, for instance, um, stratus clouds are, uh, again, in this lower region. The bottoms of them are in these lower regions, um, but then are spread out so that, uh, you know, covers the sun. If you think of uh, a gray day, those are stratus clouds that cause that gray day. Um, the third term isn't one that you usually see by itself. Um, so I'm writing it over here to the side. It's nimbus, and nimbus is Latin for dark cloud. So you put it together with these other terms, and it's used kind of like an adjective for these terms. Um, if I put it in front of stratus, I have nimbostratus. That's a dark stratus cloud. So that might be one that would uh, that you would see rain if you had nimbostratus clouds, dark stratus clouds. Um, you would put it after cumulus to be cumulonimbus. And cumulonimbus clouds are those particularly huge uh, thunderhead type clouds uh, that occur when we have particularly unsettled weather, um, maybe thunderstorms and lightning, uh, maybe even uh, tornadoes. Um, and that uh, unsettled uh, atmosphere is what creates these huge cumulonimbus clouds or dark cumulus clouds. Um, and those occur, they, the bottoms of them are down in these lower reaches, but the upper reaches of them are way up in the uh, upper reaches of the troposphere, even the stratosphere, some of them. Um, the fourth term that we're going to go over is cirrus, C-I-R-R-U-S, and cirrus means curl. So if you think of a little girl's uh, maybe little tendril of hair um, that, uh, you know, hanging down, um, that's what cirrus means, curl. And those are those wispy little clouds that you see in the upper reaches. Um, of course, being up here in the upper region of the troposphere, these clouds up here are going to be mostly ice crystals. Um, remember that it gets colder as we go uh, as altitude increases in the troposphere. So near the Earth's surface, um, it's going to be warmer, so the clouds down here close to the Earth's surface are going to be mostly water droplets. But by the time we get up here to the uh, upper reaches of this uh, upper region, um, the clouds are going to be mostly made of ice crystals. 
Um, and again, uh, I've drawn this jet here because the contrails from a jet um, are also made of ice crystals, very similar to uh, cirrus clouds. They're kind of man-made cirrus clouds. And then this middle region we refer to as alto. Alto, uh, if you think of a chorus, altos are, they have the middle range of voices. Um, sopranos having the high voices and basses being the low voices. Altos are kind of in the middle. And so uh, if we would put that as a prefix, uh, use alto as a prefix to other terms to describe those clouds whose bottom occurs here in these middle reaches. So let's kind of quiz ourselves. Uh, by looking at some of these, and we'll review. Cumulus clouds, again, are those puffy clouds, mound-like. Stratus clouds are those that are a blanket of clouds spread out, a uh, little sunshine um, down here at a low level, so mostly water droplets. Uh, if we... Uh, have dark version of those, like this photograph shows, we would have nimbostratus clouds, so dark stratus clouds. These are when you would probably have rainy weather. Um, another cloud that occurs down here at these lower uh, levels are stratocumulus clouds that um, are a combination or something between the two. So they're kind of like stratus clouds, kind of like cumulus clouds. Um, it's a blanket of clouds, but you can see that they kind of have a mound-like uh, look to them too. In these middle ranges, we have alto cumulus clouds. These are still a little bit puffy, like uh, cotton balls, right? So they're a little bit mound-like. Um, but you can see that they're a little bit higher and, and um, look a little bit different than cumulus clouds do. Alto stratus are again in the middle reaches, but they're a little bit more like stratus clouds in that they form a blanket. Um, we see those these a lot around here. I like this picture here because um, it kind of looks like abs right there, or ribs or something, right? Um, and so those are kind of interesting. Um, but again, they're in these middle reaches, so they're going to be partly made of water droplets and partly made of ice crystals. And then we have at these upper reaches, we have cirrus clouds, those wispy little curls or tendrils. We have cirrocumulus clouds that are uh, kind of mound-like, uh, like cumulus clouds are, but very high up, um, but still kind of wispy. Cirrostratus clouds are, again, very high up. Um, but more like a blanket, you can see, um, not not like individual mounds, right? And so these are, uh, all of these in this upper region are all made of ice crystals. And then I've saved my last of these 10 most common uh, types of clouds for last. I saved my favorite picture because I think this one's kind of interesting. Um, I, I'm not sure about this, but I think that this is probably a, a storm front happening right here. Because if you look on the right, there's a, you know, kind of a cumulus cloud that's uh, not very high. You can see a lot of blue sky still. Um, but as you go over here to the left, you can see that that unstable air is starting to uh, rise and build the verticality of this uh, cumulonimbus cloud. Not only that, you can also see that that underneath this uh, um, this area of where the you know the towering part of it is um, that it's also raining down here um, because you can see that it's uh, kind of blurry underneath this uh, underneath this part of the photograph um, but you also see that the sunlight must be passing through these raindrops in order to form this uh, little rainbow right here um, and again down low in uh, a cumulonimbus cloud because they're so tall at the bottom it's going to be mostly water droplets but at the top it's going to be mostly ice crystals um, because it is going to be in those upper reaches of the troposphere even the lower part of the stratosphere some of these clouds so that's it for our little lesson on cloud names and cloud types and uh, that's it for now.